Hello, it's Plus Reports. It's where we bring you some of the stories and events that made the news recently. And just in case you missed out on some of them, don't worry, we've got you covered in this edition. Welcome, I'm Jacinta Ubiuko. We are starting off on matters surrounding 2023 general elections, which is gradually around the corner. And of course, there are conversations, agitations as to who the president will be and what part of the country should he or she come from. Also, some groups and individuals have declared their intentions for presidency. Interestingly, in this report, the Yoruba Stakeholders Summit Group, YSSG in Lagos, has said it is not the turn of the Southwest yet to run for president in 2023. During a press conference organized by the group, they stressed that their stance is in a bid to achieve fairness and equity within the nation. What do you think? The quest for where or who becomes the president has been the topic of discussion for most Nigerians. This is especially as 2023 presidential elections draw closer. Some have argued that it does not matter who or where the president comes from as far as competence is concerned. But the Yoruba Stakeholders Summit group believes there are thousands of competent persons in southern region. There's an aggregate tenures of president, vice president, senate president, and speaker, federal house of representatives. We have observed, with serious concern, the open and silent demand and declaration by some politicians in the south southwest, justly to succeed President Muhammadu Buhari come 2023. Not only did we find this insensitive, but we also think it is self-serving and unjust. We are also of the strong opinion and conviction that some part of the southern Nigeria deserves the presidency more than the southwest. We need peace, okay? Give people a sense of belonging. If I believe I have no stake in this pot of soup, I can as well throw stone inside. Or I break it from under. Or urinate inside. But if I believe I have a stake, no matter how poorly prepared, we guide the soup. There are people from Yoruba race who are also aspiring. Fine. They are eminently qualified. But we're just saying that for equity, fair play, and justice. They also appeal that politicians who are asking that zoning should be jettisoned should realize that they are trying to perpetuate injustice, which is against the unity of the country. For us to move forward, we must be ready to embrace justice and let things be as it should be. Should we, because people remaining to it, keep quiet? in the face of this obvious calamity waiting to befall us as a nation and as a people? The question becomes, what has the South-South and the South-East had over time? The only thing they probably have had in this fourth republic is the presence of a good luck Jonathan that was even short-lived. Recognizing the place of fairness and equity is understandable, but when it comes to true leadership, some have argued that it does not matter where the person comes from. Anyways, do not forget that the power lies in your hands as to who your president should be. Do not let anyone tell you otherwise. Do the right thing by getting your PVC ready. Still speaking of 2023 elections, Vice Chancellor of the Global Worth University, Togo, and prominent philanthropist, Professor Chris Imumolin, has urged the young people to get their permanent voter cards as that it is the sure way to be involved in deciding who handles the machinery of government in 2023. Professor Imumolin gave this charge while declaring his intention to run for the presidency of Nigeria during the JPT's uh, convocation ceremony in Ogun State. Justin Akadone has more. Believe me, from next year, Nigeria will begin to change its shape and narrative globally. The race to who governs the machinery of government is gathering momentum. Joining the list of those who have indicated interest to run for presidency is Professor Chris Imomolen, the university vice chancellor who made his intention known before this mammoth crowd, says the issues of insecurity, 
youth unemployment and bad economy, among others, can only be traced to bad governance, hence his decision to run. My major reason for wanting to do this is to see how, as a young person who has succeeded privately, I believe and I know that if given the opportunity, we can also change the narrative for Nigeria and make Nigeria great because the country belongs to all of us and we all need to come together and see how we can contribute our very best to rescue Nigeria from the insecurity problem, the unemployment challenges, the poverty challenges and a whole lot. We, we don't even have good news anymore. Professor Imamolen says he is not unaware of the party politics in Nigeria, which oftentimes direct the flow of governance. Although he has not decided on which platform to pursue his ambition, he speaks of mobilizing 40 million Nigerian youths to actualize this vision. But I want Nigerians to begin to look beyond party to personality. You know, a party can just drop any, any, anybody to become leaders and because of politics. But we need to begin to see when, as in a time like this, where we need a technocrat. I have youth platforms that have empowered millions of Nigeria. I have the largest institute in Africa. I'm the only African who have set up three universities globally. I have done it. I'm the only African who have his name on the World Book of Greatness. I've achieved so much. Look at past leaders. I don't want to start throwing stones, but by the time you compare what I've done privately with what other leaders have done when they were not in politics, I think you will be able to, to, to know. Moving on, the Bielsa State Government has flagged off its maiden education summit as part of efforts to reposition the sector. The plan is to meet global standards with the formulation of strategic policies and adoption of a 15-year framework. Our correspondent, Jesse C. filed the report. Doyediri declaring the summit open. The theme of the event is optimizing the delivery, performance and sustainability of outcomes in the education sector. With over a thousand stakeholders in attendance, the Commissioner for Education, Gentle Emela, highlights the expectations from the summit. Education is a passport to the future. For tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. This is exactly what we have gathered here to do. We trust your judgment and we place up appropriate emphasis on your expertise and opinions as we build our education plans, policies, blueprints and strategies for the next 15 years. What is key to us is that we must move up the rankings to anywhere between the first and the sixth. What is the new trajectory in education? We are talking now in these days about technology-assisted learning, which constitutes educational planning, educational documentation. Former President Goodluck Jonathan is keynote speaker. He uncovers some problems bedeviling the education sector. He insists functional education is key. We must make education very functional in Bielsa State, and we'll start from the primary, and we are trying to develop what we call, now the state has modified and they are going that proper direction, but what we call a teacher's retraining institute. Because then I saw that a number of people teaching at the primary school level were not really fit. To teach. Then the NC distance learning too was a big problem to me because when I visited some of the sites, some of the instructors themselves are supposed to be students. All the stakeholders commend the, the state, state government's move but education. urge the Ministry of Education indeed, to fully implement every policy that will be formulated. I urge all of us stakeholders to also look to improve the delivery and accessibility of quality learning resources by leveraging on sustainable ICT solutions. ICT and data-driven learning is the new normal. Now, disasters, whether naturally or by humanly induced, usually leave nothing but pains, losses and sorrow globally. Nigeria is not an exception to this. The need for a more robust disaster management in this next report, our correspondent Ngozi Kaohai Jesse takes a look at some occurrence, their management and the way forward in disaster management in Nigeria. Disasters can be caused by natural, man-made and technological hazards as well as various factors that influence the exposure and vulnerability of a community. Globally, a total number of 98.97 million people 
were affected by the natural disasters in 2020. And in Africa, about 1.7 thousand natural disasters were reported between 1970 to 2020. In recent years, disasters of various magnitude are becoming more frequent, intense, and geographically diverse in various parts across Nigeria. The most reoccurring and devastating disasters in Nigeria are flood, fire outbreak, oil spillage, building collapse, which has destroyed properties running into millions. Major disasters so far recorded in Nigeria include the 2005 Sosoliso air crash, where more than 200 people lost their lives, the Ikeja military cantonment explosion in 2002, in which people run into safety we are buried in a canal that had overgrown with water hyacinths in Lagos, the building collapse at the Itafaji area of Lagos Island, and the recent steel in Lagos, the Ikoyi 21-story building collapse, which took over 40 lives. So I was just there beside the oyst. Um, the oyst is what is between me and the pillar, although I can see so the pillars right there. So I called one of the guys to help me blink the sun, but it was busy, so he asked me to call that person, I called that second person. So as he entered the tractor, we were back to go and bring the sand from where they are, the plaster sand. As he was reversing, I just heard the sound, the cracking sound, that like something cracking. Later I looked, I saw the cracks, and before I could turn to say I want to run, within three seconds, it didn't last, and in the coming down of the 21 floors, Last of more than three seconds. Vanje Beatrice is a structural engineer, a member of the Nigerian Institution of Structural Engineers, with over 14 years of experience. According to him, 50% of houses in Lagos are not handled by qualified experts, but said there is a way out of the quagmire. The case of building collapse is not new. Um, it's, it's not uh, a Nigerian thing. Building collapse um, all over the world. But we're just looking at the statistics. I mean, it seems to be frequent here in Lagos. And that's basically because Lagos um, has, a, because of the nature of the soil in Lagos where buildings have been uh, constructed on. Now, first of all, one of the major key issues that leads to building collapse is um, uh, inadequate uh, designs of buildings. Where a building is being designed based on assumptions that are incorrect. You know, most people don't want to, most clients wouldn't want to pay for certain services such as, oh, we need to carry out soil investigation. And then the client is telling you, no, this, this is a stable ground. My neighbor has built a three-story building, so we're building three-story building. Rough foundation should work. And you find out that the proper investigation is not being done. The former Lassema GM, Adesino Tiamiu, insisted that every state should have an emergency response plan and those plans should be nationalized. Now, at the national level, they must have a plan. But when you have a plan and it is not nationalized among all of the states, if you have a national emergency management agency, it should also go that you should have state emergency management agencies. Yes, they do have them, but mostly in name in many states. There are states that does not even have a call center where you can activate the response to. There are states that they don't have an ambulance team. In fact, there are states that does not have an active emergency response team going out to rescue people. You see zero safety rescue people. I'm not saying they are not, they cannot do that. Are they properly trained to do? He advised that a national policy to educate Nigerians on disaster management be set up, while the government must be ready to invest in managing disaster. Today in America, if emergency occur, an average American knows what to do. Look, if you are working within a neighborhood, and a boy as young as seven years sight you and see a gun in your pocket, he knows, he is trained not to scream or not to shout because he knows you could shoot him. He knows how to crawl back, go in and pick the family phone and call 911. We must begin to do that. We must begin to let people know that when they see something, they should say something. Because if we don't do that and the calamity happens, 
Even you that saw it and didn't raise alarm, you may even be the biggest victim. It's time for a short break now. We will be right back with more.